Hey guys, we're back out here in the garage and tell you what we're what's going on. Basically, I may have mentioned this in a previous video, but I'm replacing the fuel injectors that are on the vehicle. Um, after we got the exhaust work done, uh, confirmed that there's no leak in the exhaust header up here. There was a small leak in the back. We replaced the rest of the exhaust back there. But what after that, I rebuilt the throttle body. That went great. But then all of a sudden, tons of goads just started appearing. And it was running super, super rough. Much worse than it was before I rebuilt the throttle body. And I started doing some research. And apparently, one of the things that can happen is you can get a lot of carbon buildup in the cylinders. And um, so I actually got, and I'll, I'll put a, a, a picture or a, a link in the description I got some uh, essentially uh, cleaner from Chrysler. In fact, I may actually have, you can also see I replaced the, uh, the coil pack on there, which was something that, that I had not done previously. Um, sorry about digging through the trash here. Oh, here it is, right here. So, so I, got, I got this, it's the Mopar Combustion Chamber Cleaner. This was recommended on a on a forum that I that I saw, and it said that because of all the carbon buildup, basically some of the exhaust valves may may not uh, be closing all the way. So I I followed the instructions on that, sprayed it in there, let it sit while it was running, let it sit, and a after a couple of hours of of kind of heat soaking into the metal and into the grime, I cranked it back up, got a lot of, of white smoke coming out, but the engine runs super, super smooth now. So that's great. In the meantime, I'd already ordered some fuel injectors. I got a set off of eBay. These are the set that came in. It's from a company called CNS Performance. I'll put a link in the description, but I got a complete set. I'm not sure why the very top O-ring on this one is blue. Um, it is the same, it's got the same same model number and everything. It's probably just from a, a slightly different lot. But anyway, they are, these are four port injectors. You can see there the, the four port. And while I had it out, I cleaned the rail really well here, um, got uh, everything out of it. So these are ready to go in. I'll put some petroleum jelly on the O-rings before I slide these in here. Uh, but anyway, these are all ready to go. Now here's the originals, which are sitting over here. And you can see, let's do a, a zoom in. So you can see on these, number one, of course they look cruddy. Uh, this missing a couple of O-rings, which have popped off. But um, these are, I found out I've got, these are factory. Um, in fact, you can actually see somewhere on here, the, uh, the Chrysler symbol. Um, Anyway, these are, these are the factory injectors. Number one, these are single port, not four port. Um, except for one, apparently cylinder number six had been replaced at some point previously and had a four port. And this one, I believe, I think I saw a Bosch symbol on it. Yeah, there's a good old focus. There's the Bosch symbol. So at some point, somebody had replaced this but um, basically what I found out was um, three of these have cracks in them. In fact, you can see the cylinders on these injectors are cracked. I have no idea if that's contributing to some of the problems that, that I was having because I was getting some random misfires and things like that. Um, but these definitely were gunked up and, and all cruddy. Uh, so anyway, those need to be replaced which is what I'm doing with these over here. So that's what's going on right now. Simple procedure, you can see it's actually just four bolts that hold this on. So you just take off, take off the air cover and then the, um, the throttle body here, that's two bolts that are here. There's one here and I think the other one, it's this one, I think there's one right back here. And then there's four bolts that hold on the fuel rail and you just pop the rail off and then here's the fuel line that comes up. Now my model has only one line up front. The return line's actually built into the fuel filter in the back. But to get that off, you 
just use one of these tools, which I've had this for years from Advanced Auto or AutoZone or something. You just take it and basically you put it around the line and when you pop it in there, it takes this, the tension off those springs. So that's what's going on. Uh, given that after I ran the cleaner, it was running much, much better. Uh, I think this is gonna really do the trick. So uh, the other thing I did was I got some ethanol free fuel to put into this. So when I crank it back up after I get the fuel injectors run, uh, run through and installed, I, you know, I hope that's going to be the solution to all my problems. I've already cleared the codes. They haven't come back yet. So cross fingers that they're going to stay away this time. Hey guys. So what I've, what I've got here are my new injectors and I'm just going to take just a little bit of petroleum jelly here and really just kind of run it right on the o-ring just so it's got a little bit of lubrication so that when it gets goes in here it goes in easy and it does not rip the o-ring and it should just pop right in like that and i believe let's see the fuel rail goes in like that so I need to rotate it up just like that. And then these do have, if you can see here, right down there at the base, there's a small groove which accommodates this clip. And it goes on uh, like this. And just basically it's a press fit. So get in the groove there. And that's all there is to it, just to just to latch it in, just like that, into that groove so it doesn't, doesn't slip out. Now, I've actually seen something online that said that uh, some injectors, at least some replacement injectors, don't, uh, don't accept the clip. And so it's not really a big deal because you're pressure-wise, you, I mean, obviously you've got some pressure coming out of here, but this is, of course, bolted down to the intake. So it's not really that big of a deal if for some reason your injectors don't have that retainer clip, but I think they probably will. So anyway, I'm gonna do the rest of these just the same, and then we'll install it in the vehicle. All right, so we're all set. Everything looks good. Everything is nice and clean down in the injector area. So we should be ready to install 
into the vehicle. Okay, so over at the vehicle, and of course before we we run it in to the ports, um, I'm gonna go ahead and again, put just a little bit of lube on, just to show you. Put a little bit of lube down on this end here. I'll clean this up here in a sec before we put it in, but we'll run this around the O-rings. Because one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to get, now again, this is not, at this end in particular, it's not pressure. Um, you're going into the intake, but you still don't want to rip these O-rings as they're going in, and you want to make it go in nice and smooth. The nice thing about petroleum jelly is because it is a petroleum product, it will break down over time. And the other thing I am going to do is when I connect, when I go in to connect the, um, the connectors, I will put some dielectric grease on the electrical connections as well. So all well, this looks good. And oh, go this way. Now I have gone in and I did clean out where the injectors go in and I've actually vacuumed out. There was some, you know, a little bit of crud kind of in the area. I vacuumed all that out, cleaned everything out really, really well. This should go in, especially with that petroleum jelly on there. You can see it just slides right in and we're fully in. So now what we can do is we can take, take our bolts. Again, there's four of these. The ones on the ends are studs. You can, uh, it might be a little bit difficult to see that this is a stud here. And then the one on the other end is also a stud. And that's because the O2 sensor brackets that, that hold, that hold the, uh, the connectors those slip over these and then there's a nut that goes over that so I'm take a ratchet here cinch that down not that not to be too terribly tight there we go and then we'll put our bracket on and we'll take our nut. And we'll run that down in just a second. And we're going to do the same thing down here. Again, another bracket there. I think I've mentioned in another video, this, this Jeep actually has four O2 sensors, two pre and two post catalytic converter. And, um, and then from the factory, it had it actually had three catalytic converters. Now I've had one of those removed. The two up up front are still there, so we're still we're still fully legal. But uh, it has lost one. And I will say, sound wise, the new exhaust I put on here. If you like having a throaty exhaust sound, which since this is my, my daughter's car, she thought it was hilarious. But if you like having a uh, kind of a throaty sound to it, <laughs> it is now throaty. Uh, it actually sounds quite nice, I think. It's, it's a bit trucky. All right, so that's on. And we can slide our fuel connection on. Get it fully engaged. There we go. I feel it's not coming off now. A little bit of gas. Not bad. And we'll pull that on. And that's not going anywhere. So, got our fuel connection on. 
nice and solid and I mentioned the use of some dielectric grease. I'm just going to take just a small dab. Just helps to seal the connection. Now, dielectric grease does not actually conduct electricity. What it does is it takes and fills in the gaps. So the idea is one big thing it can do is it can help prevent moisture from corroding the terminals. So that's one of the big reasons that you use it. And, uh, on off-road vehicles, it's really important. Um, but uh, anyway, okay, so we got those on. Let's get our bracket assembly back on here. And again, this is there's two. There we go. And number three there. up over like that and we've got two two bolts these are uh, these are 10 millimeter by the way go into the block or into sorry into the intake in fact the the four bolts that hold the fuel rail in and the two bolts that hold in this bracket they are all the same so same, same link, same thread, everything. Good free movement, everything's connected. All right, before we button everything up, let's, uh, we'll let the system prime. And basically what we want to happen is we wanna be sure that the fuel can prime up in here into the rail. Now, one interesting thing, this type of fuel rail does not have a Schrader valve on it. So it doesn't have a port where you can measure the pressure. Um, so that is, uh, that is one kind of interesting thing, I guess. There's a, a pressure valve here, but I think it's an emergency blow off in case the pressure were to go really, really high. Um, but, uh, but everything is looking good here. Um, a little bit of residual there just from where I had, had installed it, but, uh, but I don't see anything dripping down. I don't see any any leaks or anything like that. So I think we're, I think we're good. Okay, so I think we're good at this point. So basically now what I'll do is I'm gonna let this run and get up to operating temperature and just kind of monitor it and then we'll take it out for a test drive and I'll let you know how it goes.